Okay, hi everyone, thank you for, for joining. So to introduce myself, my name is uh, Mark and I've been with Taluna for about five years and responsible for our global, our, our panel pool communities platform in Europe and Asia. And I'm delighted to introduce uh, Julie Paul, who's going to be running the webinar for you um, this afternoon. Julie's the Senior VP for Online Communities at Taluna. Uh, she's recently joined the company just a few months ago where she came over from Ipsos after spending around 15 years there doing everything pretty much from market research to building their US access panel and starting the custom panel division around around seven years ago. Uh, she's from Vancouver, Canada and um, home of the Olympics a couple of years back, three years back. And um, I'll be passing over to her in just a second. Just a couple of uh, housekeeping notes. If you've got any questions um, as we go, please type them into the chat box and I'll do my and uh, we'll do our best to answer those as many as we can at the end of the session. Um, any questions that we can't answer, we'll make sure we get back to you as, um, after the webinars, uh, webinars ended. So please feel free to, to email those questions through. Um, so I'm going to pass over to Julie now to get started. Thanks very much. Thanks very much, Mark. That was a great intro. And I'm very happy to be broadcasting to you here from wonderful London, UK. So welcome, everyone. We've got, uh, I think, a full hour ahead of us. Um, we've got people coming in from all around the world, so it's quite exciting actually. Um, we do have a small majority of people from the UK, so as I speak today I'll be using a few UK references, but I will do my best to make it um, as global a presentation as I can. So let's begin. Okay, so what is all the buzz about and how can we demystify this market research online community space. The first thing I thought I would do is give uh, a little bit of history, a uh, history lesson, and then we can dive into answering the top five questions that I get asked um, quite frequently. And those are, what is a community? What is a panel? And what's the difference? Um, there's a lot of confusion out there, I think, in the marketplace today amongst um, companies, clients, um, people talking about this space. So my goal today is to try to demystify that a little bit and give you a little bit of my perspective from my experience uh, in the industry. Second question is, why would I want to build a community panel? What are the benefits? Um, thirdly, what's involved in building one? Uh, what are all the things that I need to do? Fourth, what makes a good community panel? Um, and finally, I guess, how would we integrate social media and why would we want to do that? So those are a lot of the questions that I get asked and, I, and I, I'm hoping that by the end of the session you'll have a little bit of a better understanding. So first off, to do that, what I'd like to do is give you a little bit of history. Um, okay. So. Before we can actually go in and define what a community panel is, it helps to understand the evolution of panels in the market research industry. And I can tell you that it's still very much changing, um, probably more so in the last few years than it has uh, in the last 10 years. Um, so for those of you um, who are old enough like me, what I want you to do for a moment is think back to the 1990s. Uh, before the internet was really, uh, you know, really got going and before the Postal Service started losing billions of dollars, um, panelists at that point in time in the MR industry were recruited by, um, were recruited to join what we would call mail panels back then. And people still use mail panels today. Um, and the reason that they were, that we were using mail panels back then was really about reaching all households. So all households in the UK, all households in, in the US. And if you remember, of course, as I said back then, online didn't exist. So that, that's really where panels began. Um, then, moving along, we moved into online panels. So mail was in place for a long time. Um, it quickly seceded to be replaced by online panels. And I would say this occurred around in the early 2000s. And I always say to people that I believe that um, the year 2003 was the year that market research went online, at least in North America. Um, and, and online panels really came in two varieties, very large panels that were built and used by research companies, and then specialty panels um, that were made up of more specific segments within the big online panels. 
And I think interestingly back then, the industry tried to move from telephone surveys directly into an online or internet methodology without really accounting for differences in behavior and how people would use panels and how. Um, and so what happened was the methodology took a little while to catch up to the technology. And so online panels um, soon took over. Um, you know, I, as the, I guess the, the, the methodology of choice for three main reasons. Firstly, um, clients really started to understand that they could use like a caddy type survey programming with, uh, in conjunction with, the visual benefits of a male questionnaire. So those two things you could do online and something that you could never have done before. And then secondly, the sheer speed of online research. And third, the cost reduction. Um, so really, at this point in time, you, you, you are in a place where you could do surveys that um, married that, you know, surveys that were able to be programmed in a logical way, like a caddy survey, had all the great visuals of a mail survey, a survey that you'd send out on a mail panel. And then you were able to do it all really much faster and much cheaper. So moving along our line here. So then we get into, I'd say, around 2003, uh, the same year that we kind of went online, custom panels began, began to emerge um, after really a couple of things happened, uh, I think, in the industry. Um, well, in the industry and in, in, in the world at large, research departments became more sophisticated in targeting and gathering um, consumer data and storing it. So at this point in time, they now had websites of their own. They were starting to build their own websites. They had email address lists that they could access. And the second thing that was happening is on the internet, um, you could say that consumers started to have a voice. And so they started to, so to speak, speak back to, to the brands and to the clients. Um, and that actually had a bit of an alarming effect, I think, on, on a lot of the clients that we worked with. And you know, there was this n notion of losing control over what customers were you know, saying and thinking. And the internet and the, using the web was still, you know, relatively new phenomenon. So what happened was this notion of custom panels became really popular um, with some clients because they wanted to be able to reach out to their customers online um, and kind of, I guess, in some ways, gain back some of that control. Um, and so at the same time, actually, too, is the technology from some of the MR companies and some of the technology companies was starting to come on stream. Um, so let's see, here we are now with community panels, um, or MROC, Market Research Online Community. Um, so they're really the next evolution of custom panels, I would say. And they're defined by a few different things. So they're defined by the complexity of the research being conducted the amount of interaction and interactivity within and between panelists, and the mix and the number of activities conducted within the panel. So here again, we see an evolution of a, what I call now a traditional custom panel to a community, where there starts to be interaction among the members within that community. And I'll talk more about that as we go through the session. Um, so panels and communities have also become branding tools. Uh, and communication tools and marketing tools and all in one common place um, so that as I was mentioning the software a couple year, a few years back now um, a lot of the companies started building these all in one uh, software management tools um, software that could do surveys uh, scripting software that could do panel management had a database backbone it had a front end that you know uh, members could log in and see um, that was, you know, new back in 2003. That kind of software was very, very new. And now it's becoming, there's an evolution of it, and it's becoming much more sophisticated. So moving along our continuum to, which kind of brings us to, really to today, and we're seeing even further evolution within this space um, of MROC to include new, met new methods of accessibility, such as mobile and new ways of connecting the panel community to social media like Facebook. And the byproduct of the change, uh, really that this, the byproduct of that is that it changes the value proposition for market researchers and marketing. And it really brings the idea of integrating even more data uh, and you know, the notion of big data. So now you've got a situation where you have these 
uh, all-in-one software tools that can house a community panel and you can bring in data from all different areas. You can bring in data from a client's CRM database. You can bring in data from Facebook. Um, you can do your survey-based research. You can do your qualitative, some qual research. And it's all in one um, housed in one area. And that brings a very powerful tool to, um, to clients and to brands. <clears throat> So now that we kind of have a bit of history of sort of where community panels and custom panels have evolved from, I wanted to take a moment and share with you some numbers in terms of the space in general and how, how big the market is for this type of product or solution. Um, so the chart shows the growth of the custom panel business or custom panel space since 2003. And that's around the time that they first emerge, as I mentioned before. So you can say that, um, and actually I should mention all of the numbers here are, are in uh, pounds, but I'll convert them for dollars for our American friends who are on the phone. So you can say that in North America, um, the space today is about a 60 million to 200 million pounds. Uh, that's about how big um, the market is in North America. And in Europe, it's about 30 to 40 million pounds. And so you can see the evolution of how popular this, is, you know, this has become. Uh, particularly, North America um, has, is a little bit of ahead of us folks here in Europe. Um, and that kind of mirrors, I think, the adoption of online. You know, several years ago, I think Europe was um, lagged behind a little bit in terms of the online adop adoption. And I think we're sort of seeing the same phenomenon here. We know that um, it's projected that over the next year, uh, at least in 2013, that the growth in North America is expected to be t about 24% and in Europe uh, just over 40%. So it's still a hugely growing market. And when you compare that to the M market research industry as a whole, which is, I think, 3 4% growth year over year, that you see um, this is really a growing space. And a lot of clients are starting to see the benefit and have been seeing the benefit and are continuing to ask questions and really want to know, you know what's up with this. So uh, I wanted to also mention, you'll notice that I put down there for you to see the average price of a panel in the community. And we'll, we'll get to the differences of those in a moment. But um, so a, a panel um, is roughly the average price for a panel for a client, a brand, it would be about 50,000 pounds, give or take. And for a community, it's significantly higher than that. And I'll talk a little bit about the reasons for that. So and now that I've hopefully piqued your interest in there, we'll, uh, we'll move on to really what, um, what is a community panel and, and trying to define that. So this is our first question, our series of five questions. So um, I think Forrester Research has the, I think, the most um, simplistic but easy to understand definition of, of what a community panel is. And it's really an ongoing dialogue with the people, with, with the people that will help to shape the future of a company, which is normally you know, your consumers, although you can build a community panel of, of pretty much anyone, um, different stakeholder groups. Um, but most, the, the most that we see is really a brand building a community panel of their, of their customers. Um, so really it's all about connecting to those customers, asking questions, and listening to what they have to say, and doing it over a continuous period of time. So moving on, you, you're asking, I'm sure, so what is the difference? Again, I keep talking about panel and community. And I have to say that, that you know, clients and, and MR industries people working in MR, we all talk about those terms, I think, interchangeably. And um, so it gets confusing, you know, really, what is the difference? So this graphic, um, we're trying to depict exactly what that difference is. So the biggest difference between a custom panel and a community is really about the level of interaction and the level of information sharing that occurs. So if you look at the top graphic, custom panels tend to be one-way experiences. A researcher, so the person on the left-hand side there, the little yellow guy, um, has questions about their customers. And so they create a survey, and then they use the panel to recruit people for that survey. 
And as a panelist, your contact with other respondents and even with the company is very limited. You're not, you're only answering surveys and um, really that's all you're doing is the researchers asking you to do a survey, you do a survey and that's it. And there's no, you're, you're in a database amongst, you know, could be thousands of other people um, and that's it. That's the very basic, uh, I guess, definition of a, of a panel. Now, looking at the bottom graphic, so in a community, you introduce more of a qualitative element as well as the notion that panel members can interact with one another. So looking at the very left, as the researcher, you can now, quote, listen through qualitative methods such as discussion boards, blogs, and commentary as to what your customers are saying. This leads you to gain new insights in which you can do follow-up surveys and the process then continues. So it's kind of more of an iterative process. Um, again, you know, you're as a researcher, you're you're looking at your community online, you're doing some discussion boards, some blogs, some qualitative interactions, and you're really watching and listening and observing to see what kind of behavior and what what people are saying and and gaining some insights. And then from that, it gives you more ideas to do maybe some follow up surveys to quantify what you're what you're learning, and then you go back out. And then in addition to that your members on your community now have the tools and the methods to really go in and start communicating with one another. So from an engagement point of view, the panel now becomes more of a community. And this is where you get into the terms of panel versus community. So naturally, the panel members um, are more interested and more engaged because now there's, um, they're given access to others and they're able to have a, a higher level of control over their own experience on the panel. And in some cases, into an extreme, like, uh, for example, on our Toluna, uh, our, we have a large Toluna.com panel, um, we give members the ability to actually post polls and questions to each other. So that would be, you know, the, I guess, the ultimate or the extreme in terms of interaction amongst members. So I hope that uh, made sense. The other way you could look at it, or the way I tend to see, you know, looking at, again, the entire space out there of community panels and everything in between, is you can look at it on a spectrum or a bell curve. And on the left, we have panels where members do not interact, as I just explained. This represents, I think, a smaller portion of the, the, the total space. Um, and as do communities on the other side of the spectrum, where there's very high engagement and, and, inter and a strong interaction among members, where I believe the largest share of the market is really in the middle, or where I would call a hybrid, or the term community panel. So again, just to kind of think about this again for a moment, on the right-hand side, we have these true communities that um, where think of um, three to 500 members of a community that are interacting continuously on a daily basis. There's lots of activities going on. They're being asked to participate in all kinds of discussion boards and blogs and journaling exercises and all of those kinds of things. Maybe a little bit of survey work, but mostly it's about interaction. And then on the far left, it's almost the polar opposite of that, where it's what I first described and where we saw custom panels emerge from, which is really, um, you know, a database of people. There's no interaction amongst them, and we're simply doing mostly surveys with them. And then in the middle is really, I would say, the sweet spot where you've got a little bit of, you got both. you got the best of both worlds. Um, and in terms of pricing and cost, um, the more interaction you have among members, the more you have to moderate that, and so the more professional time for someone to, it takes for someone to actually sit there on a day-to-day -day basis and really um, look at what people are doing, understand what people are talking about, and interact with them, posting discussions, posting blogs. So because of that, it costs more. That's really the bottom line. On the flip side of that, with the panels, um, really, your cost is made up of building the database and, and doing the survey work. And then, you know, as I said, it's the best of both worlds is you have a little bit of both somewhere in the middle. Another way to look at it is if we were to take a fictitious example for a moment. So suppose that this fictitious company called Nor uh, Star North Airlines is building a community panel of 5,000 of their travelers. So that's the picture in the middle. Um, 
this is what I would call the core of the community panel, where you can do quantitative surveys because you have enough members that you can pull large samples and get you know your 500 members, uh, 500 respondents for your survey. And you can, in addition to that, you can do um, different point in time qualitative activities. So you could do, you could pull a sample and do a discussion board, or you could pull a sample and do um, some kind of a journaling exercise. Um, so. Um, the one thing is here, you can, you can allow for some interaction among the members, but you have to be careful because you don't want um, necessarily to have, you know, thousands of people answering a discussion board. So you really have to manage that carefully. Um, and then from that um, community panel of 5,000 members, you could actually pull out um, smaller groups of, let's say, 300 or 500 members and create a a community, like a true community, where you're asking these people to interact continuously. So maybe you have 5,000 um, people who are uh, customers of Star North Airline, but maybe you want to pull out the elite frequent flyers and you pull out a small number of 300 and you ask them to communicate and, and do a lot of qualitative and interaction over a period of a few months. So that really is, I would say, the epitome of everything. If a client asked, you know, for that, it would, um, well, um, it would be quite a big project, and um, you know, it would it would end up being a fair amount of money. But it, that would be the epitome of having everything: custom panel, community, and and everything in between. Most of the time, I would say we see uh, a lot of our clients in that, again, that sweet spot of the community panel space where they build a community panel of a couple thousand members to give them enough that they can do some quant surveys and enough that they could do some point in time qualitative work and in addition, um, you know, have some qualitative activities up and running continuously so that there is some level of engagement and interaction amongst, amongst the members. So second question, so now that we kind of understand, or hopefully you understand more about what a community panel is, why would you want to build one? Well, you, I would say you could do almost any kind of market research, almost any kind of market research with your community panel. You can do, as I said, everything from qualitative activities, often used at the innovation um, cycle, um, to generate and brainstorm new ideas and new concepts to then testing them with a wider sample. You can do UNA, usage and attitude studies, you can test different communications, you can do customer satisfaction research, and the list is almost endless. And I thought the best way to bring this to life was to um, share with you a couple of examples. So this first one um, is a community panel that we built for a company called Sleep Innovations. And they're a leading retailer of sleep products in the United States. Um, they created and launched the Sleep Talkers Forum, where individuals that have been identified as sleep enthusiasts can go to provide feedback on bedding and purchase decisions, um, a, whole, a whole gamut of things. Um, it's the panel community panel is about 2,000 members. It's been going on for, I think we're in our second year, second or third year, and uh, they, again, as the epitome of a community panel, they do um, quite a few quant surveys and they do some qual. So I would say in any given year, the first year they did somewhere around 25 activities, and an activity could be either a survey or some sort of qual discussion board, so roughly two a month. And then in this past second year, they're on stream to do upwards of almost 50 different activities, um, which, you know, you have to be careful with that because, um, you know, we're replenishing the panel at this point with, with additional members, um, but there's always, you know, the best mix of not doing too many and not, but doing enough to keep, um, keep the members engaged. So a couple of examples um, of what they've used um, their community panel for. They recently did a series of studies um, around the sleep habits of pets, interestingly enough. So they did a series of different um, uh, research on that. And one of the studies they did is they actually um, chose a group of people, pulled out a sample, and they did um, what we would call an eye hut or an in-home test 
of pet beds, so little sleeping pet beds for, I think, dogs and, and cats. So they, they picked out a group of people, they shipped them these pet beds and asked them to use them or asked their pets to use them, and then they did some follow-up research to find out you know, how it went, et cetera. Um, so, that, so that's just one example, and as I mentioned, you know, it kind of runs the gamut in terms of all the different kinds of research you can do with one of these community panels. Um, Sleep Innovations also, they um, will often share the results of some of their research with some of the major retailers that they sell their products through. So again, these guys sell um, mattresses, they, they manufacture mattresses and other kinds of sleep products. So, um, for example, for those of you uh, who are in North America, um, you'll be familiar with Costco, I'm sure, and so Sleep Innovations, for example, will share some of the information and insights that they've gleaned with Costco, which is one of their uh, distributors and retailers. Um, and I put up on screen here just so you could see an example of visually of what a community panel would look like. There's often, well, there always is a sign-in page, so it's a on the left-hand side there, it's a public page. So anybody, you know, on the internet could actually access this page. And then if you want to join, you would join and you would fill in a registration form. And then once you've joined, on the right-hand side there is shown just a couple of snapshots of some of the, um, the pages that you would see once you've logged in as a member. Okay, another example I wanted to show, this is from our friends in Australia. Um, we built a community panel called the City of Ride, um, and City of Ride is a municipality in Australia uh, that was interested in truly engaging with their city residents. So they wanted to listen to their ideas about the city and to ask them about different um, initiatives that they were planning to, to implement. So the community panel we built uh, is, again, about 2,000 members, um, and they use the community to post a lot of different types of discussions. And so some examples, they were looking at um, the issue of litter and waste in the city. So they post some discussion boards around that topic. They were looking at pedestrian safety and um, wanted to get residents' um, experiences and uh, thoughts on that topic. Um, they wanted to talk about with their, their citizens or their members about graffiti in the city and um, how they could combat that problem. They also wanted to talk to them about their pets, <laughs> running theme there, pets and veterinarian services within the city. Um, and they also did some studies on, on local parks and asking for feedback on that. So there's, again, a whole variety of topics there, and they've been um, using this community panel um, continuously and to some, some really great success, and it's given them some good insight. So that's a couple of examples, and there's, there's so many more I could give you. Um, I could probably do a whole webinar just on sharing different examples. Um, a couple of other quick ones before we move on. Uh, in my experience, I remember we built a panel of people, uh, farmers who grow potatoes in eastern U.S. Um, uh, very interesting. Um, it was an agricultural firm that was interested to know and uh, you know how how and uh, the how and why of growing potatoes. Um, also built um, uh, community panels for air, major airlines. I kind of use that fictitious example. Um, you could build community panels in the financial sector for, for different banks. I mean, you could almost take any brand in any sector, and you could, there could be a reason to build a community panel around that. So it really runs the gamut. Okay, so now, we kinda, we, now that we understand, hopefully, what a community panel is, we've seen a couple of examples, you might ask, and I get asked this also uh, quite a bit, is how do I go about building one of these? So, well, I'm going to take you through the life cycle of an online community panel. So there's really two overarching phases. Uh, there we go. Um, first, building. So the, there's a whole uh, phase of, of building the community panel, figuring out what you want, and then doing building it. And then secondly, managing and using the community panel. So on the right-hand side, we see the startup or building phase. On the left, the managing phase. So like anything else, I have to say that the better you plan ahead and know what you want, the better the end result is going to be. So what I'm going to do now is take you through each one of these, uh, these six um, phases. Whoops. 
Sorry about that. Okay, so first, step one, defining your community panel. So to do that, it's important to ask the right questions. And I think one of the most important questions, and the first question you should start with, is who is the audience? Um, I've been involved in so many different panels, everything, like I said, from potato growers to frequent flyers to ma major airlines, to, of major airlines, um, a whole bunch of different ones. Um, and so you really need to define who it is that you want to be a member of your community panel. Um, a couple of other funny examples just recently, um, we were asked about people who roll tobacco in India. Now that is a very specific market. So again, the more specific you can be and the more defined you can be with who the audience is that you want, the easier it is for the market research company to price out what you need, to understand you know, who you're after, how you're going to brand it. It really, you know, obviously, it, 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 uh, who you're talking to kind of influences all of the decisions that you're going to make and how you're going to build it and how you're going to use it. So some other questions to ask are what issues are you exploring? What kind of information are you looking to gather? When and how often are we collecting that information? From how many people are we collecting it? And um, are we wanting to listen or to ask, or both? Um, so I think uh, the second step, so after you've kind of asked all, yourself all these questions and hopefully had some good answers, the second step is to define your research strategy. So are you looking to do mostly quant or qual, I think is, is one of the key um, questions that I would ask. And, and how long of an engagement are you thinking? Are you thinking that you need a two-week engagement, a three-month engagement, or a one-year engagement as some examples? And this is really going to drive the type of community panel that you're going to build. So for example, if you have a very specific question you need answered over a two-week period, then building a panel is not for you. Um, what I'd recommend in that case is you need to do a one-time qualitative activity. The other thing you need to ask yourself is what type of features would you want to provide for your consumers um, in this community panel? So how interactive would you like it to be? And, and again, your answers are going to drive the type of community um, and, and the cost. So thirdly, once you've figured out um, a bit of a research plan, who you want to target, how many people are going to be in there, um, you know, how frequently you want to reach out to them, how long of a time period you're talking about. And I would also say, in terms of time period, that we've run community panels that have lasted several years. Um, again, because the goal is to continue to have that dialogue with your customers. And, you know, you might start off with a couple of thousand, and then you might find that you want to increase that because you're doing so much more with it. Um, or, and you're continuously also re replenishing and re uh, your, your community panel uh, with new members. So anyway, step three is about recruitment and finding the people that you want to join. So there's a lot of different types of sources that you can use. Um, I would say the most successful, the easiest, um, is to use an existing email customer base. Uh, it's, it's far more cost effective and ha has the highest uptake than any other method. Uh, having said that, um, you know, if you don't have email addresses, that's fine. Um, your, your provider can usually, uh, well, can almost always um, provide sample for you to recruit from. Um, you can think outside the box and think about things like inviting your Facebook fans um, or, and website visitors, so doing banner ads and pop-ups and things on your, on your corporate website. You can purchase a list. Um, you can do what I would call offline to online recruiting. So you can hand out postcards or you can hand out in information at point of sale. You can use QR codes. Um, you can do phone recruiting. Um, there's all kinds of different methods, all with varying costs associated. Uh, obviously, online is less expensive than offline methods. Um, and again, your biggest uptake is going to be from those email lists that you can provide. Okay, so now you're at the point where you know you've built, we've built this great community panel of uh, you know a few thousand, let's say a few thousand members for sake of argument. Um, now you need to to go into the management phase, um, and I think one of the first things you need to do 
is assign a strong community manager to guide and foster your online presence. Um, and you need to be present, not hiding. And ideally, that would be someone from the client organization or the brand organization, someone that really understands the brand, someone that has a vested interest in wanting to speak to consumers and customers um, and really bring that to life. And I would say that the more you can engage with and talk to your community panel members, the more successful it will be. And I've seen both kinds. I've seen community panels where clients and brands get very involved and it's a very um, engaging kind of community. And I've seen others where it's, um, you know, the client for whatever reason is much more removed, not interested, and they're not as successful. So that would be something to think about. And the other thing that I strongly recommend is that you have a panel manager. And it's, it's different from a community manager. So the panel manager is more the behind the scenes coordinator. They're the one managing the database, managing the incentives, doing all the upfront recruitment, um, looking at panel health, doing replenishment of the panel. Um, sometimes they'll do scripting of surveys. And they re basically handle all the administrative aspects. And I think a lot of community, a lot of clients and brands sort of forget about that part. So uh, it's really something that I, that I stress that is really important. So community manager uh, on the engagement side, panel manager on the behind the scenes side. Next, what you um, need to think about is creating a dynamic activity schedule. And that will keep members consistently occupied. And it's best to stagger those activities as well. So you, again, don't want to do too many, don't want to do too few, and you want to space them out. And then um, next is um, using a combination of incentive types um, to increase participation. So, and your incentive type should match the type of audience. So you would incentivize uh, frequent flyers of, a, of an airline quite differently than you would incentivize, let's say, potato farmers in, in the eastern US. So <laughs> you need to think about that. Um, and then you need to, to monitor um, your panel health reports and really understanding what's, what's going on in the community. So once you've um, thought about managing and how you're going to do that, then really it's about uh, reaping the rewards of all of this hard work and, um, and using your community. And the more you use, the higher your return on investment. And I'll talk a little bit about more, th more about that as well. Um, so you need to design and implement highly engaging, rich media questionnaires. Because remember, most of the time, a lot of the times when we build these communities, they're, your, they're the client's customers or the brand's customers. So you don't want to give them those long 30-minute, 50-grid questionnaires. Please don't do that. Um, and you want to try to make the, the, the research engaging and, and interesting. Um, you can design different discussion boards and different qualitative activities, um, interact with your members through brainstorms and one-on-ones, get to know your members on an individual basis if you can, although if there's a few thousand that might be difficult, but at least, again, depending on the spectrum of engagement and community versus panel that you're doing. If you're doing one that's more a smaller group, then you can get to know them. And then just really gain a better understanding um, of your members. And finally, um, last but not least, is really um, using your panel um, to, and analyzing the data that you're getting out of it. So, and that can be done with a lot of real-time tools. Um, at Taluna, we call it Taluna Analytics is our software. Um, where you can really do a lot of um, cross-tabulation and weighting of data and significance testing and exports to PowerPoint and um, all, of, all, of those, uh, all of those good things. So moving along to our fourth question. So what makes a good community panel? And what I did here is I just really created a, I guess a top ten list, so to speak. So I'm just going to go through them. So here's, here's what makes a good community panel. Firstly, members that understand what they signed up for. So you have to do your recruitment right in the beginning. And you have to really, uh, right from the very beginning, explain what it is that, that the members are getting themselves into and, and what they signed up for. Secondly, a community manager who really cares about the brand. I talked a bit about that already, ideally someone from the brand organization. Thirdly, a good mix of both survey and qualitative activities, not too many, not too few. 
Um, do surveys that are short and interesting as much as possible. Appreciate uh, um, and have meaningful incentive programs, both intrinsic and extrinsic. And what I mean by that is intrinsic is those activities that you do on the community are things that will want people to come back. And extrinsic is you know, sweepstakes or points programs or actually giving them something tangible um, in, in recognition of, of what, they, what they're doing, what they're contributing. A good community panel um, is where you properly monitor the content for relevance and that you ban inappropriate um, comments or members. So I think I've seen far too often where um, we'll put up a community panel and the, and the client uh, will post something and then they'll look at it a little bit and then they'll kind of, you know, forget about it. And so it's, it's that constant monitoring that has to happen in order to make sure that, you know, people are behaving themselves. And then communicate back to the membership and give them some feedback and share the insights you've learned. It's very important. Um, it's an extra step that has to happen. Um, and the more you give back, I think the more rich and valuable information that your members will give back to you. Uh, monitoring panel health and replenishment. Do Make sure you do replenishment periodically. And finally, a good community is one that provides you, as the researcher or the brand manager, new insights and a great return on your investment. So speaking of that, um, so as mentioned, the more you use your panel, the greater your return on your investment. Um, so community panels have an upfront cost. Um, it's a fixed cost. Uh, it's the cost of setup and recruitment. And so sometimes there's a little bit of sticker shock, shock at the beginning because um, you do have to spend that money up front. There's really no way around it. You need to build the website. You need to do the recruitment. You need to build um, a profiling survey so that you can ask people, you know, their demographics, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but what you need to think about is then advertising that upfront cross cost over a number of studies. So if you said to me, I I'm interested in this, but I'm going to do four studies this, you know, this year, I'd say, well, building a community panel or any kind of panel is not for you. I, I would say go off and do four one-off studies. So I think the magic number is really around one a month. If you have enough research that you, um, enough research that you can do at least a study a month, then I think a community panel starts to make a lot of sense. And the more you use it, the more you just need to think about taking that initial investment and amortizing it over those number of studies. So if you're doing two activities a month, if you if you just do the math out, you'll find that you're on a on a per study basis, your cost becomes much much less than um, going out and doing one those 24 one off studies. Um, so that that's a really important point in terms of return on investment. A couple of other things to consider is. Um, an asset like a panel um, can often be accounted for separately, and I'm talking about the financial statements and in the accounting. So I would encourage you, if you're considering building one of these, to go talk to your accounting department, and they may be able to do some magic work or, or you know, account for it in a different way. Um, the other thing, these are more soft things, but it's, it's, I think they're important and they need to be factored in is you need to factor in that the benefit of advocacy and loyalty and good PR. I mean, having this community panel of your customers and your best customers really shows that you're giving back and that you're listening. And so, so that's, you know, that's important. And then some brands we've seen, um, and I mentioned it with Sleep Innovations and Costco, is that they share their insights with different stakeholder groups. So I, for example, we've, um, I've been involved in building some readership panels um, for publications where they take some of the insights and survey findings and they share it with their advertisers and they're able to um, negotiate you know, different things with them. Um, there could be negotiation, negotiation of shelf space if you're in the, in the packaged goods um, arena. Um, and then I mentioned the, um, you know, the retailers and with Sleep Innovations, that example. Okay, so the fifth question that I got asked uh, more recently, I, th I would think, um, this is really becoming the, the latest flavor of the month or the flavor of the year, is why integrate social media and how do I do that? Um, so moving on, here's some stats for you. Um, so 73% of all online U.S. adults are active on Facebook. 
think about that for a moment. I'm sorry I don't have the European um, equivalent numbers, but I would imagine that it's similar or becoming similar. Um, excuse me, 94% of the world's top brands now have a face uh, presence on Facebook. I mean, that's kind of a staggering number in my opinion. And then even more staggering is that 95% of all Facebook wall posts are not answered by brands. So I think we're just starting to see this phenomenon of brands on Facebook and being, you know, the pages that people like, but the brands are still learning how to respond to that. And so this is really a new arena for, for I think, for everybody. And there's a tremendous amount of information on Facebook, on the Facebook fan pages. So when Coca-Cola has a fan page or pick any top uh, brand, a lot of the um, athletic footwear, you know, Reebok, et cetera, they all have um, fan pages with millions of fans on there. And when you go and, and look at that, they've got a lot of very, um, a lot of information. They've got all the demographic information, but even more than that, they've got information on individual people who are Facebook you know, users um, on what brands they like. So you could go to, let's just say, uh, any major brand and look at their Facebook page and you can see how many, you know that they like that brand, but you can also see what other brands those, you know, your people like. You can see how many friends they have and what their friends like. And you can see all the chatter that's going on. So again, we're just starting to learn how to, you know, grasp all of that information. And I can only speak at this point about what um, Toluna offers in terms of this. So we offer two ways um, or two methods to integrate with social media. The first one is from a panelist engagement perspective. Um, we can feed in uh, the panelist Facebook wall into the panel homepage. So in that Sleep Innovations example I gave you or the City of Ride, um, if either one of those brands had a Facebook fan page, we would be able to import that wall feed into the uh, home page. And secondly, I'm sorry, no, I made a mistake there. It's not their fan page. I'm getting these two mixed up. It's the, it's the members uh, wall. So if I join Sleep Innovations and I have a Facebook page, um, I can go on to my Sleep Innovations, um, I guess, you know, as a member of Sleep Innovations, and then I can see my Facebook wall in there. So hopefully that makes sense. The second way, and what I was thinking of was, um, if a client or a brand has a Facebook fan page, then what we can do is we can actually um, go in and, I guess, sort of recruit all of those fans into the community. And as we do that, we can actually take all of that information that's on that Facebook page and put it uh, into the community database. So I'll show you a quick example of that. We, in the, in the UK, um, we built a community panel for the University of Northampton. And this just shows uh, on screen here um, their, their Facebook fan page on the left-hand side. And you can see in the middle there a little button that says the University of Northampton. So if you were to click on that, then you go to right into a registration into the community. So we're essentially recruiting from the fan book, Facebook fan page into a new community panel for the University of Northampton. And so once they've joined, then you see on the right-hand side their home page. So welcome to the University of Northampton community, and, and we can do uh, more things. Actually, I've put up a couple more screenshots here. So then you can start to survey them, and you can start to do discussions and polls and message boards and different things that we've talked about. And so really, um, it's, it's very, uh, this, is, this is new, the whole Facebook integration, but it's very powerful because, again, what we can feed into this database is all the information about what these students are, actually, this, sorry, I forgot to mention, these are, this is a community panel of students um, that was built, um, they wanted, the university wanted to pr improve its student satisfaction program and strengthen the student recruitment, and so, um, that's why they built their community panel to really start to interact with the with the students, and so again back to the Facebook, um, what we could do is now pull in um, data from the Facebook fan page um, of the students and who they like, who you know all the different Facebook brands that they've liked, and all the information with uh, in relation to that. 
Okay, so I think, okay, at this point we've got about 10 minutes left. I've, I've gone through my list of five important um, questions and I hopefully I've demystified a little bit of the community panel space for you. I did have to add one question, why Toluna? It's a little bit self-serving, of course, but I, I did want to put that plug in. Um, and I'll be quick, just a couple more slides, and then what I'll do is take um, any questions. Um, so why Toluna? Because we offer state-of-the-art community panel software. We offer full service to build and manage your community, and we have expertise in the area. Um, secondly, we have about 2,500 market research clients globally. We offer comprehensive solutions to meet different client needs. I think that's one thing we do really, uh, well, we do a lot of things really well, but I think this one in terms of really customizing um, our approach to fit the need of the client. And we scale from, we can build community panels from 500 people to 50,000 people. And I think we've proven ourselves in the space in terms of having um, really um, the world's largest and long-standing community. So not sure if anyone of you have ever visited the Toluna.com site, um, but we've got a community panel um, in, I think it's, we have members in 39 countries. So it's, it's quite massive and it's very global and it's very interactive. And so I'd encourage you to go and check that out. And so that is really, this is just a snapshot, this is the last slide, just a sort of partial list of some of our clients. Um, and that, that concludes our webinar, except I do want to ha take a few questions if, um, and actually as Mark had said earlier, if I can't, you know, if I can't get to all the questions, what I will do is make sure that I um, write back to you guys individually. Okay, so just give me a moment here. I'm going to look at your questions that you've been sending in. Just give me a minute here. I'm just... Uh, reading through a couple just to see what I can answer here. Okay. Ah, okay, here's a couple. So uh, I got a question. What is Katie? I'm sorry, I'm using uh, market research terminology. Katie is really phone surveys. Um, I don't even know what it stands for, frankly, <laughs> but it's it's really phone surveys is is what that is. Um, I have here. Have you ever built expert panels comprised of individuals with high level of expertise or knowledge in a specific area, for instance, health professionals or academics? Um, yes, I would say um, I've had a little bit of experience in that area. Um, and it's just a matter of finding um, you know, who those experts are. And again, working with the client, uh, we need to figure out you know, the definition of that, what, what would be the definition of, of an expert, um, and, then, and then recruit from there. Uh, hmm, do you have any stats on users over 50 years using these types of community panels? Thanks. Um, I wish I had some very specific stats um, that I could share with you, but I don't have specifics. I can tell you anecdotally um, that over 50s do use the community panels. Um, in fact, the retired population, you may be surprised, well, maybe not surprised to learn that um, they often have more time on their hands and, and that um, we have some active users that are, that are in the older age group that will um, just have the time to be able to, to get onto the community and, and share their thoughts. So I, I definitely wouldn't discount that, um, that demographic at all. Um. 
is the community manager client responsible for developing the recruit list and managing the community day-to-day, -day, or can Taluna handle these items? That's a good question. I would say either or. So we, um, we can do some, some of our clients, um, depending on the level of experience that they have, some of our clients um, uh, license the software from us and some initial upfront management. And then they prefer to do the survey scripting, for example, and the, the management, community management on their own. I think more and more we're seeing um, clients that really want us to provide that service um, for them, and so we can, we can do that as well. And I think that the best, um, what I've seen the most successful is where it's a real partnership, so where we each do our, ex, our expert, uh, you know, our, ex, our, we each, what am I trying to say, we each use our expertise. So again, as I was saying before, the client or the brand knows their product and service inside and out. So I would recommend the ideal situation is they become the, quote, community manager, and they're the one that on a day-to-day -day basis are interacting with the members in the more qualitative aspects. And it actually, frankly, saves them a lot of cost because they're doing that work and not having to pay us to do it. Um, on the panel management side and the actual back-end running of the, of the panel and the recruitment and the managing the incentives and doing the health reporting, I would recommend that you leave that to us because we have experts to be able to do that. So I think the most successful ones are really where, where we do it jointly. Um, is there a danger that you are only recruiting brand advocates or that your member become brand advocates? Yes, and that's a really good question. And in fact, um, I'll talk a minute just about representativity because I do get this question. It, could, it should have been my sixth question. <laughs> are community panels representative? And um, I would say the answer to are they representative are, uh, it depends. Um, if you're asking if they're representative or if you're thinking about being representative to the populate, the U.S. population or the U.K. population, then no, they're not unless you were to build it in a very specific way. Um, but what they, they are representative of whatever audience or population that you're building. Um, and so, again, back to the initial question or the initial question you have to ask yourself is, who am I wanting to be on this community panel? And whoever you build that is what you're representative of. And so for brands, if they're supplying us with email addresses of their customers, for example, oftentimes it will be, the panel ends up being, can be biased towards those that are more engaged with the brand, those are the more, that are more interested in the brand, um, that are those that use the brand more. Um, you can mitigate some of that by making sure that you invite folks to the panel who are, you know, use it less, who are less engaged with the brand. Um, but often what we would recommend in those cases is that you build a, a community panel of your, your, your advocates. Um, and those are a really important group, by the way. <laughs> Don't discount them. Um, very important group. And that your, your, your data would be representative of that group. And then um, use another source for, for gaining the bigger picture. So you may want to do a lot of our clients will use our Taluna.com panel, which is, you know, you can pull a representative sample of say, your customers that use competing products or your customers that are less engaged with you. Do a study with them and do a parallel study with your community members that are your customers on your panel. So you, you can, there's, you know, there's a lot of ways that you can um, get that bigger picture read without necessarily um, worrying about trying to make your panel the be all and ultimate of representativity, if that makes, if that makes sense. Uh, I think I might have time for one more question, and then we're almost done. Let me just look through here. I can answer one quickly. What's a short questionnaire? That's an easy, well, that's an easy one. A uh, short questionnaire, in my mind, would be, um, you know, about five minutes, five, five to seven minutes. Um, I think uh, the broader question is, you know, what's the optimal length of survey? And I would say um, anywhere from five minutes to 15 minutes is optimal. Um, once you start getting into 20 minutes, you could probably get away with. Um, once you start getting into more than 20 minutes, um, you, unless it's a really interesting survey, I would stay away from that. And a lot of time, what's great about community panels um, 
is that because you own it and you, you've paid the upfront cost to recruit these people, just take your 30-minute questionnaire, break it into two short 15-minute ones, and, and you've got a more engaging audience who's going to give you better quality answers than tiring them out with a 30-minute questionnaire. And again, it's a, it's a shift in thinking from the old days or the old telephone days where I'm trying to like cram as many questions into that survey as I can um, or because I have to pay for the sample. Um, so just think about that. Um, and then I'll just do this one last question and I, what I'll do is I'll make sure to, um, to uh, write answers to the rest of the questions and send them back to you. Um, the last one here is what's an ideal frequency of activity or engagement? I'd say the ideal frequency is if people, you should at least have a touch point every month, at least once a month. Um, you could get away with, um, you know, up to once a week. And again, it depends. If you're building what I would have called one of those true communities and you've told people up front that this is going to be a, you know, let's say a six-month community where we would like you to be very interactive, we're going to ask you a lot of questions, and you have the right incentive program, you can go out to those people every week and ask them to do something. Again, it all depends on how you're incentivizing them and what you've you know, set them up for, so to speak. On a typical community panel of a couple thousand members, I would say, um, you know, rule of thumb, anywhere from, you know, two to three times a month is ideal. And I think that's all the time we have questions for. So um, I will, as I said, men mentioned, I will go through the rest of the questions and I will uh, make sure to write back to, to all of you um, with some answers. And we will do a follow-up. We have a nice little short video we want to send you. Um, and, um, and that's it. So I hope I've answered um, a lot of your questions. I hope I've demystified some of the space for you. And uh, have, a great, um, have a great afternoon. Thank you.